let's took an example let me read the question at first a school bag manufacturer produced 5200 units of school bags per year yearly manufacturing volume is 5200 units the selling price and cost structure per bag are as follows material it is given wages look at that it is already been mentioned expenses now materials is 100 wages is 60 expenses is 40 total cost of the bag is 200 rupees and the company charge a profit of 50 rupees and as a whole they got the total selling price of how much to 50 rupees now the question is few other informations are also available such informations are raw materials are on an average in the store for 3 weeks processing period is 2 weeks finished goods are in stock for 1 week credit allowed to customer we provide the credit limit to our debtors or customers two weeks credit period allowed by suppliers from whom we collect the from whom we from whom we collect the raw materials from whom we get the raw materials from their end also that is a possibilities of getting a credit limit of how much two weeks wages and expenses are paid a gap of one week basically there is a time limit or there is a time lag or credit limit of only one week balance of cash to be kept as rupees 10000 it's always be whenever you are in in a particular operations in a uh, in your business in that time you have to keep a certain amount of cash always be as per contingencies to maintain the liquidity immediate liquidity of your business prepare a statement showing working capital of working capital requirement we are going to calculate a statement of working capital requirement or a statement of working capital based on that particular question before starting that question i must suggest always you should remember that there are three components which are very basic, very very essential for calculating that working capital such components are first is your output that is the first component second com component is time lag as i said that and the final component is proportional cost that is rate per unit that is the important part if you multiply these three your volume and you are giving the time lag or getting the time lag and multiplying by what is the proportional price per unit you can easily manage to get each and every components as i said earlier now looking into the question first of all you have to settle the output now output is also directly related whatever time lags provided in the given question if you look at the time lag which are available in the given question 3 weeks 2 weeks 1 week 2 weeks again 2 weeks 1 week it is probably available to you on weekly basis that means in such particular question each and every other informations informations related to time lags are available on weekly basis then it is become very much easier for us if we calculate that working capital on weekly basis also now what is your first job the output how to establish how to settle that output since all time lags are available in weekly basis it will be easier for us if we converted that annual output into weekly output annual output in the sense yearly production vo volume is how much 5200 units then that 5200 units you have to convert it into weekly output how to calculate the first note you have to write here weekly output how to get that it is your annual output your annual output divided by 52 weeks then here it is annual output is 5200 bags 5200 bags divided by 52 weeks ultimately you get 100 bags how many units you get you get here 100 bags okay now weekly output of that particular manufacturing concern is how much weekly output of that particular manufacturing concern is 100 bags now output remain 100 and it is available for each and every components you can directly plot here output is 100 for finished goods also it is 100 for debtors also it is 100 for creditors also it is 100 for outstanding wages also it is 100 for outstanding expenses also it is 100 now probably the question came into your mind why i am not consider it for bank and cash first of all because bank and cash that is readily available to us how much 10000 we doesn't have to calculate bank and cash it is available and in case of working progress we are going to calculate the value of working progress separately i'll discuss it later part later part of the question now uh, except that working progress and bank and cash in every cases which we can directly calculate in the statement we plot here how much 
100 100 is our weekly output second one is what time lag try to plot the time lag one after one first raw materials are in the store for how many weeks three then raw material should be multiplying by three next processing period for two weeks as i said that work in progress i'll come later on that is why i keep it blank right now second finish third sorry finished goods are in stock for one week then it should be multiplying by one next credit period allowed to customer customers are debtors okay customers are debtors and it is mentioned here how many weeks two then it should be multiplying by two next credit period allowed by suppliers two weeks our suppliers provide us a credit limit okay and that is how many weeks two next it is mentioned wages and expenses are paid a gap of one week each okay for wages is one for expenses are over it it is also again i can consider it one let me multiply for all because as i repeatedly told that it is basically a multiple format of output into time lag into rate per unit now the final one rate per unit you have to cost us about at the time of plotting that rate per unit first one is raw materials it is clearly understandable the raw material cost available per unit of total cost is how much 100 it is exactly 50 percent of that you multiply that 100 and make it close next one is what finished goods here you have to understand the logic finished goods means the product is already been produced that means whatever wages and other expenses required to invest for that required to employ for that particular product it's already been employed that is why when you consider finished goods you have to consider here total cost since it is already been finished you have already been employed wages and expenses along with the raw materials then what is the total cost remember again in case of finished goods you have to consider the total cost per unit of the product total cost is how much 200 okay let me plot here 200 finally debtors they are our customers to whom we sold our product now we deal with our customer of a product at what price of course selling price of course selling price now here also in case of getting the value of debtors what particular rate per unit you can consider here you have to consider here 250 250 then you can remember here like for total cost it is applied in the stage of finished goods similarly selling price it is applied for debtors that also you can remember next bank and cash for bank and cash you doesn't have to think of bank and cash is directly provided to you the amount of that is 10,000 it is directly available at you 10,000 next follow creditors how to get that creditors credit period allowed by suppliers creditors are basically considered our suppliers who provide us raw materials and other materials sometime okay sometime other materials can be considered also basically creditors means the suppliers of raw materials now credit credit period allowed by suppliers is how many weeks two weeks now here in case of creditors i must plot here two weeks and what is the price of what is the price of creditors what is the price of creditors that you have to be understand creditors are suppliers of raw materials as i told then what is the rate per unit of raw materials 100 in case of creditors you have to consider it 100 outstanding wages what is the rate per unit of wages 60 next outstanding expenses what is the rate per unit of expenses 40 i must say here in case of current liabilities you have to be focus on the several cost items okay once you focus on several cost items the current liabilities become very much easier all the components of current liabilities are become very much easier because creditors is related to raw materials wages is directly mentioned in fact expenses that is also directly mentioned here now almost each and every components we filled up okay even if we can count also in case of raw materials it is 100 into 100 into 3 okay you are getting here raw material as a 30,000 next you follow finished goods 100 into 200 it is 20,000 debtors 100 into 2 into 250 it is 50,000 once you multiply you can get 50,000 creditors you are getting 100 into 100 into 2 it is 20,000 next you follow outstanding expenses 100 into 60 into 1 you are getting it 6,000 next outstanding expenses 100 into 1 into 40 
you are getting here 4000 then almost you have count creditors outstanding expenses outstanding wages bank is available to us data also have count finished goods also have count raw materials also have count only work in progress part is left in case of work in progress as i as i said earlier in case of work in progress it is a to employ along with our material the labor and other expenses that's it that is why these three components simultaneously you have to consider to value the work in progress when you are going to value the work in progress you have to employ materials wages and other expenses in progress we basically follow the almost similar method what we apply for other components in case of work in progress calculation of work in progress first you have to consider three major components or three cost units one is raw materials second units wages and final units that is expenses okay these three components simultaneously you have to consider that it is our raw materials wages and expenses but the logic remain the same like the way we, we apply that for other components also output output is already understandable that is 100 and that is apply for each and every components 100 as you as it is after output time lag time lag processing period is how many weeks two then the two weeks we consider for each and every components and finally it is rate per unit what is the rate per unit in case of raw material it is 100 in case of wages it is 60 in case of expenses it is 40 now you multiply you can manage to get the total amount of work in prog progress it is 20,000 this is 12,000 and the last one of 40,000 okay total working capital figure how much you got 40,000 now work in progress you can directly plot here 40,000 for better understanding you can give here a small clarification it is on from node 2 from node 2 we can manage to count 40,000 as our working capital now if you look at this statement each and every components are already been prepared now you have to sum up each and every components under current assets at first 30 plus 40 70 20 90 plus 50 1 lakh 40 plus 10 your total figure comes to 1 lakh 50 thousand that means looking into the business the current assets weekly current assets may be 1 lakh 50 thousand on which 30 thousand is raw material 40 thousand is uh, work in progress and 20 thousand is finished goods 90 thousand 10 thousand is bank and cash and due to customer is 50 thousand basically stock what we consider it is basically amalgamation of these three okay in few authors they suggest to show stock separately in that case your stock will be here 30 plus 40 70 plus 20 90 000 in simpler sense 90 000 is your total stock which contains raw material work in progress and finished goods your receivable amount is 50 000 which you can collect from your customer later on and you keep 10,000 rupees in your hand then total current assets comes to 1,50,000 look at the current liabilities here 26,4 you are getting a total of 30,000 then 1,50 minus 30 you are getting a final balance of 1,20,000 that means looking into that particular business your current assets can be on an average 1,50,000 your current liabilities can be on an average of 30,000 the difference between current assets minus current and liabilities as i said earlier ultimately you got your amount of working capital must be how much 120000 and that is considered as net balance or net working capital okay remember there is another concept of working capital that is considered as gross working capital when someone is asking for gross working capital it is basically implies only current assets if you look at the statement our gross working capital is 150000 our net working capital is 1 lakh 20 Thousand.